Right, so in this video we're looking at vectors and we're going to be looking at both two-dimensional and three-dimensional pathways using vectors. So vectors purpose is to describe how to get from one point to another. One of, as you can see on the screen, I've got an example here and this is actually from a past paper question. So in the diagram, and this is the easiest way to kind of describe how vector pathways work. So in the diagram, we have O, A, B, C, D, E. So O, A, B, C, D, E is a regular hexagon with a center at M. And vectors A and B are represented from O to A and O to B. And we need to figure out expressing how we go from A to B in terms of our vectors A and B that we have. So with vector pathways, when we're doing things like this, we're looking at a to B is quite a straightforward route, we can go this way. However, we've not been given a definition of how we get from A to B. So vector pathways in general are kind of looking at how we get there going different routes. So I could just go straight the quick way to go from A to B, but I can also go from here, I can go back this way against that arrow and then along B to go this way. So it's looking for the alternate routes to get from one location to the other. So here, from A to B, what I'm doing is I'm going against the flow, like I said there, so I'm going from here against the flow of the arrow. So when we're going against the flow of the arrow, it's the same as taking away that vector, because when we put a negative in front of a vector, it just changes um, the direction of it. So to go from A to O, we go negative A, And then to go from O to B, straightforward enough, we are going just that straight direction there. And because we're going with the arrow, we're adding it. Um, so now we need to go from, this time we need to go from O to C in terms of A and B. Um, for this one, it requires a little bit of information about our shape. But So we're going from O all the way up to C. So we're going basically from O to M and then from M to C. Because we have a regular shape and it's a hexagon, that is telling us that these lines here are parallel. You can kind of see that they're the same in terms of what we're doing. We end up with kind of rhombuses. When we've got a hexagon, it gets split into regular uh, equilateral triangles. So from O to C, is the same as to go from O to M and then from M to C and we also know that O to M is the same as M to C which is the same as A to B so therefore we can so it's negative A plus B for O to M and then it is negative A plus B for M to C. So kind of all together there, I'm going negative 2A plus 2B. And if we kind of think of that in terms of like visualizing it, so if I'm here, I'm going to go back there and then up to there and then back there and up to there to get from O to C. So our directions, it becomes a little bit more complicated, but it's just looking for the alternate routes. So now if we go into kind of three dimensions with our next question, it's a similar kind of thing with vector pathways, but it's to do with vector pathways and finding coordinates. Right, okay, so here we have our 3D vector pathway. So we have a triangle, um, well, we've got a diagram here which shows a square-based pyramid, and we've got T to S, which is represented by F, which I realise I've just cropped the bottom out of, and I will fix that. So here we go, we've got F there. Um, we have T to Q, which is G. We have T to P, which is H. And we're trying to figure out how to get from R to P in terms of F, G and H. So obviously we can go this short way, R up to P, but we don't have enough information there. But there's other directions we can go. So we can kind of go along to Q, to T, to P. We could go to S to T to P, any of those would work. So kind of we're looking at 
like I said, it's the alternate routes to get there. So to go from R to P, I can start, so I'm starting at R, and then I can go to Q. So I can go from R to Q. And then once I've got to Q, I then go from Q to T. And then once I get to T, I can go from T up to P. So it's all about finding that alternate route that uses the things we know. So because it's a square-based pyramid, we know that if this is F, so is this back one here, that's F2. Um, we also would know that this other side here is G2, because they're the same thing, um, because of the fact it's a square. So R to Q. So here again, so I'm going against the flow of the arrow, so it's going to be negative F. So the main thing here is to remember if you're going against the flow of the arrow, then it is a negative of that vector. So from Q to T, I'm going against the flow of the G arrow. So I'm going back that way, so it's going to be negative G. And then from T up to P, going with the arrow, so it's going to be plus H. So just general thing, if you're going with the flow, it's positive. If you're going against the flow, it is negative. And that's it for vector pathways, 3D and 2D.